the making of a saint. The making of a saint. I prayed about and sought where to find an accurate, descriptive, concise definition of what a saint is or who a saint is or what a saint looks like or how you make a saint. I found this story that for me epitomizes what it means to be a saint. A little boy attended church with his grandfather one Sunday. His grandfather's church had beautiful stained glass windows, much, I'm sure, like ours. His granddad told his grandson that the windows contained pictures of St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John, St. Paul, and a whole lot of other saints. When he got home, the boy told his mom and dad all about his visit to his granddad's church. His dad, wanting to be funny and curious about what his son had learned, asked, So what is a saint, son? The boy thought for a moment and then replied, A saint is a somebody the light shines through. A saint is a somebody the light shines through. A perfect definition for us this morning as we look at what it means to make a saint, how to become a saint, and how to define sainthood. So who are your saints? Now, I'm not talking about who's going to play today at about 3 o'clock, but who are the saints that you know, those heroes of the faith that have put on flesh, lived among you and among me? Who are the people that when you think about a godly man or woman, one who will for sure hear, well done, thy good and faithful servants. Who are your saints? The people that you've known. That maybe you've thought about, if, if I could only be like this person or that person. Our passage this morning reveals the beginning process of becoming a saint. It reveals where saints start. At the ground level, the foundation of who a saint is and where saints come from. For Roman Catholics, if you were raised Roman Catholic, uh, you know that uh, the Catholic Church uh, canonizes saints, which means they uh, select people. They lift up people who have lived extraordinary lives in the faith. If you go to look and see how many there are, there are as many as 10,000 or more. There's a little bit of a debate on how many there really are and and really who was the first saint. I sought that out this week and really could come to no good conclusion or definitive conclusion. Some would say in the Catholic Church, I'm sure, St. Peter because Jesus said, On this rock, Peter, I will build my church. If that's the case, I would like to maybe banter back and forth and say, I would say St. Matthew would be worthy, in my opinion, of maybe one of the first saints. He's the author of the gospel from which our passage comes from this morning. He tells us of how he answered the call to ministry, about how Jesus came through his hometown of Capernaum, and he said, follow me. And Peter stepped out of his tax collector booth and followed Jesus and became someone on a journey of becoming a saint, St. Matthew. The word that Jesus gives us as far as a beginning part or point for a saint is found in our passage today. For I have come to call the righteous, not the righteous, but sinners. For I have come not to call the righteous but sinners. And so for you and I this morning, the first road to being a saint is that we are all sinners. So if you would, if you would just uh, appease me here, who all is on the road to being a saint today? Anybody want to say they're on the road to being a saint today? So those of you not raising your hands must be sinless because here it says that, that Jesus came not to call the righteous but sinners and And that's what happened in Matthew's life and in Peter's life and in John's life and in Paul's life and in many others' life. It's what's happening in my life today as I'm on the road to sainthood. There's something about that that doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, that I'm on the road to sainthood. 
But if we believe what we say we believe, we are becoming light and salt, as Jesus called us. We were on a road to righteousness. When we think about becoming a saint, you and I think about the things we do. Jesus thinks about the heart we have. That's the difference. And at the core of every saint is a sinner that's saved by grace. Amen? I heard two people that was confident about that. At the core of a saint is a sinner saved by grace. Amen? Amen. That's a little bit better. In the United Methodist Church, we see and define a saint as a devoted follower of Christ. We get that from the Greek hagios or the Latin sanctus. You'll see it on the front of your bulletin today. The Apostle Paul refers to saints countless times when thinking and speaking of the people of the church. And so that's you and I. That's not just those in Ephesus or Philippi or Thessalonica or Corinth. But that's uh, the church in Minden. If Paul were to write a church, the Apostle Paul, the canonized saint Apostle Paul, he would say, you saints in Minden. And no, he wouldn't be talking about the people across the street only. He would be talking about us too. So hear the good news. While we were yet sinners, God saves and saved us. Hear the good news that you are on the road, the journey to being a saint because you are, I am, a sinner. We know that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We know that that is part of the fall. I I love how the song that we just proclaimed, it talked about what it meant to be a sinner, poor and needy. And oh, for a thousand tongues to save, to sing, it, it spoke about what it meant to be someone who was a sinner saved by the blood of Christ. Here in our passage this morning, just to let you know a little bit about Matthew chapter 9, Jesus is at the beginning of his ministry, his three-year journey of displaying the fullness of God on this earth. He's building a team of leaders. We quickly, quickly call them disciples, but he's building this team of leaders whom he knows will eventually spread the gospel to the world by launching the church. He starts with future saints, dirty, rotten, scoundrel sinners who have the potential to become saints. Matthew is one of those dirty, rotten, scoundrel sinners. Because of his occupation, he is deemed unclean by anyone who's a good and right Jew, especially a Pharisee, those who were out to hear Jesus and trap Jesus and eventually kill Jesus, collecting the taxes for Rome made him ritualistically unclean and an outcast, which is why the Pharisees said, why Why do you eat with sinners and tax collectors? They were synonyms for one another. This passage is in a thread of passages telling of how Jesus forgave sins and how Jesus sat down and ate and went to those who were unruly, unruly who were heathens, And forgave them and opened his arms to them and said, I came for you as well. Our our passage this morning, Matthew chapter 9, highlights that a relationship with God is for all and begins with all. Bob Carlyle, the, the songwriter, singer of Butterfly Kisses, wrote another song. And sings another song that um, is beautiful. We're not playing it today because it's six and a half minutes long. And all I could think about was your hungry tummies during that six and a half minute song. But it tells about a down and out man. Who walks by a cathedral each day. And he wonders what life could be like inside the monastery that he walks by each day. One day he sees a priest outside the iron gates. And he says, oh, tell me about your life inside this place. And the priest replies, we fall down, we get up. We fall down, we get up. We fall down, we get up. 
Yeah, the saints are just the sinners who fall down and get up. In today's modern technology, uh, write that song down. And when you feel like a dirty, rotten scoundrel, play that song. Learn those words. Know that you're on the journey to sainthood because a saint is a sinner who falls down and gets up. A saint is a sinner who falls down and gets up. Jesus watched his closest friends, this team, this band of brothers and sisters, I would say. He watched them fall down over and over and over again, which gives me great hope. But what separates them from others in the times of the first century, Jesus, is they got up time and time and time again. And today we call them saints because they birthed the church that we continue to worship our Father and our Savior in because they continued to get up. And so no one should leave here today saying, I could never be a saint because saints are sinners first. Secondly, I just would say that as I look at the life of Jesus and as I look at those who followed him, saints are those, or sinners are those who move towards sainthood through an encounter with Jesus. Our passage this morning is really a a jumping off point. I don't always like to preach in that way, but this is a foundation for us. And as we continue through the Gospel of Matthew, as we're reading the Bible in 90 days, we've got 10 more days to go. But as we read through Matthew today, we saw how sinners started becoming saints as they encountered Jesus. If you want to know why Matthew, this tax collector, by the way, a tax collector in the times of Jesus, it was a place where you could be a man of great wealth. If you want to know why I think maybe Matthew should have been or could have been the first to receive sainthood, uh, it's because he risked the most when it came to following Jesus. Peter, Andrew, John, all of the other apostles, disciples, they, if this whole Jesus thing didn't work out, they could fall back on fishing. They could just go back to fishing. As a matter of fact, after Jesus was buried in the tomb, they went back to fishing. But Matthew, when he said, when Jesus said, follow me, and he stepped out of that tax collector's booth, you better bet your buns that everybody who knew him said, that's it for him. He went from a life of having much to a life of having nothing but Christ. And if you want to know why, it's because he had an encounter, or he witnessed encounters with Christ there in Capernaum. He witnessed how a centurion's servant had been healed from afar. He knew of these instances. He had seen the righteous become, or the sinners become righteous. He had seen people with leprosy completely healed. He had seen the blind given sight and the deaf receiving their hearing. And so to be called by Jesus was worth the sacrifice. And so saints begin as sinners, and we are continued on that road as we have an encounter with Christ. An encounter with Christ is our pathway to sainthood. If you look at the Pharisees, who I would guess were on that ritualistic, outwardly actions route to sainthood, they missed the mark. When Jesus spoke of Hosea 6.6, 6, when he said, I desire mercy. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. He spoke of what it meant to know Jesus in your heart, to worship the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so as he called Matthew, as he called the other disciples, and he, as he calls you and I today, we're invited into an encounter, an experience with Christ. John Wesley said that it was a way that changes our heart from all sin to all holiness, sainthood, sanctus, an encounter with Christ. 
Next, I believe, as we become saints, I believe disciples sharpen disciples. Disciples sharpening disciples produces saints. As we gather together, not as holy huddles, but as those who encourage one another to go and be those whom the light shines through. But go and learn what this means, Jesus says. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Mercy, God not giving us what we do deserve, which is death. And Jesus urging the Pharisees to go and learn what this means. And I don't know about you, but the only way that I experience that sharpening is to be with brothers and sisters in the faith. And to ask them, how am I doing? To ask them, what are you doing? To say, hold me accountable. Disciples, sharpening disciples, produce saints. I think you'll remember the Proverb 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man or woman sharpens another. Coaches know that competition for a position makes both players grow. CEOs know that hiring a go-getter can cause the entire office to become more effective and efficient. It's because we sharpen one another in ways that allows the Spirit to do work in our hearts. Saints begin as sinners, and through an encounter with Christ, become disciples who sharpen one another. And finally, as we said at the beginning, saints are proclaimed when the light begins to shine through us. That's our canonization process in our church. When the light begins to shine through us, when we know that we're not the source of the light, When we remember the words of Jesus in Matthew 5, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world, Matthew 5, 16, so let your light shine before men and women. And so this morning, are you convinced and convicted that you're on the journey to sainthood? Are you placing yourself in the middle of encounters with the risen Lord Jesus? Are you allowing men and women to sharpen you in the faith? To encourage you along? That's really a question about are you in community? And then I just would ask the question, does the light shine through you? Does it bubble over? Is it unmistakable that Jesus lives in you and shines through you. I remind you of a story that I told several, several months ago about 18th century England, about how the culture was that if you were were caught stealing sheep, that there was a brand placed on your forehead. This is actually true. The brand ST, Sheep Thief. And there was a young man in his teenage years who had nothing, who stole sheep for wool in the winter and meat. He was caught, convicted, brought before the council, and the unthinkable happened. He was branded ST. The man changed his ways, went about his living, stayed shamefully, I'm sure, in that community lived a life that was for others instead of himself, embodied the Gospels, became what we're talking about today, someone that the light shined through. When he was up in years, in his 80s or 90s, when he passed on, as leaders, younger leaders from the community began to talk about him, they began to ask the question, what, 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 is, what did the initials on his forehead stand for? And they began to ask about his name, and it wasn't that. And then someone spoke up and said, we just assumed that it was his canonization of a saint, S-T. So if you feel like a sheep thief today, know that you're on the road to sainthood, to an encounter with Christ, to the sharpening of other brothers and sisters, and through allowing Jesus to shine through you. We fall down, we get up. We fall down, we get up. We fall down, we get up. Yes, the saints are just the sinners who fall down and get up. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Amen.